Hi, welcome to the MGH Weight Center orientation. I'm very excited that you decide to listen today about what we at the MGH have to offer with regards to the treatment of obesity. My name is Matt Hutter, I'm the director of the Weight Center, and I'll be presenting today along with Dr. Angela Fitch, who is an obesity medical specialist who is the associate director of the program. So today's orientation will start with an introduction to the MGH Weight Center. We'll talk about what is obesity and discuss the causes of obesity. We'll take a talk about the MGH Weight Center multidisciplinary approach and the different Weight Center programs, including the nutritional behavioral program, the medical treatment program, as well as the surgical management program. So first, let's talk about the MGH Weight Center and what makes us special. We have a truly team-based approach. It focuses on the treatment of patients with obesity with a multidisciplinary subspecialty center. One of the first of its kind, established in 1999, we focus on lifestyle, medication, and surgical treatment programs. We have certified obesity medical physicians. We have nine different uh, obesity medical physicians who specialize in the treatment of obesity. Most programs don't even have one. We care for adults and adolescents. It's truly unique in the country. We have a surgical program for adults and adolescents, as well as a medical treatment program for adults and adolescents. And it's really a world-renowned teaching center, and there are plenty of opportunities to participate in research, but you don't have to if you're not interested. The MGH Weight Center has several different locations. Uh, we're based mostly out of the MGH main campus in Boston at 50 Stanford Street, and all programs are offered there. In Danvers, we also have a program focusing on adults, and that's in, on Wednesdays and Fridays currently. In Waltham, we'll be opening up a program soon. North Shore Medical Center has now combined with the MGH Weight Center to create one true weight center program. So surgical options can also be provided at the North Shore Medical Center if you prefer that. But what sets us apart from other centers is that it's truly a multidisciplinary approach. We have dietitians, we have behavioral psychologists, obesity medical physicians, as well as bariatric surgeons. And let me introduce that team first. The Weight Center Obesity Medical Specialists include Dr. Angela Fitch, who will be speaking later on, as well as Dr. John Nadai, Dr. Chika Inekwe, Dr. Lee Kaplan, Dr. Paul Copeland, Dr. Nick Tritos, and Dr. Fatima Stanford. The surgical team has five different surgeons, myself, Matt Hutter, as well as Dr. Denise G., Dr. Elon Witkowski, Dr. Oz Morales, and Dr. Jaime Rivera, who operates up at Salem Hospital. Karen Flanders is the nurse practitioner who is a major part of the team. Our registered dietitians include Abir Bader, Annette Langan, Aaron Ryle, as well as Marianne Sakitas, who all are specialized in the treatment of patients with obesity. The Weight Center psychologists include Dr. Stephanie Sog, Dr. Noreen Riley Harrington, Dr. Susan Panava, and Dr. Susan Himes will be starting this spring. Our pediatric medical providers include Dr. Vibha Singhal and Dr. Paul Bopel, as well as Dr. Angela Fitch and Dr. Fatima Stanford. So as you can see, this multidisciplinary approach requires a lot of different caregivers, but provides the best care for you. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Angela Fitch, who will be speaking about the medical treatment arm and starting with what is obesity. Thank you, Matt. We're now gonna talk about what is obesity. Obesity is a disease of excess body fat. It's a medical term. It establishes this excess in body fat that affects our health. And we estimate it by something called the body mass index. And this is our BMI. The BMI is shown here on the slide with overweight BMI being 25 to 29, obesity greater than 30, and severe obesity is greater than 40. And these are the numbers that we have for adults. They're a little different when it comes to children. You can see here on this slide that the higher your BMI, the higher your health risk. So as our BMI, which is plotted on the x-axis here along the bottom, as that BMI gets higher and higher, it increases our risk of having other diseases that can affect our health. In fact, there are over 195 diseases that are related to obesity, things like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, things like gallbladder disease, as well as diabetes, high blood pressure, and diseases of the heart. What causes obesity? Most people believe it's caused by eating too much, that the balance between the food we eat and the energy we burn is really the culprit. Here, we're gonna walk through a patient's report and see, is this you? Do you struggle with this as well? What normally happens is we see that we make a decision to lose weight. We work hard at trying to eat better and exercise more, 
And in turn, we have some success. But then, unfortunately, as the progress slows down, we hit a wall. And as we hit that wall, then it becomes harder and harder to stick with those changes that we made. Is this something that you struggle with? I think you probably do. But why? Why is that a struggle? If it was just about eating less and exercising more, we would all continue to be successful over and over again. Every single week, we would lose more weight. But this doesn't happen. We make changes, and yet we don't get the same effect of those changes. Body weight regulation is very tricky, and the food we eat and the energy we burn are not the only factors. The triangle at the bottom of the slide here represents that question, what are those other factors that get us in trouble as to continuing to be successful with our weight. It turns out that likely everyone has a set point for energy storage. The set point is illustrated here by the thermostat at the bottom. Susie, this patient here, her set point is at a lower BMI. She, naturally speaking, is around a 22, 23, 24 BMI. These are the people that we really love to hate because they don't struggle with their weight. They're just there and they do a good job no matter what they do. Rachel may be more here in the middle and struggle a little bit to, to maintain a normal uh, BMI. And then John, John is here at the top, and he really struggles with his weight and struggles to make a change to get that BMI down. And why is that? What determines that set point at that higher range? And if we can make changes to that set point, then we can be successful long term. The biggest contributor to obesity as a disease is genetics. Up to 70% of the disease of obesity is related to our genes, and we can't change those at this point. There are some things we can change, though. Our processed diet, irregular eating patterns, play a role in our set point and what our body wants to be at. Inadequate physical activity also plays a role. The less active we are, the more our body wants to store energy as fat. Inadequate sleep, if we don't sleep well for whatever reason, if we have sleep apnea or if we, have, we just stay up too late or we have a baby waking us up in the middle of the night, all these things, if we don't sleep enough and if we don't sleep well, it increases our appetite the next morning and it also makes us store more energy as fat. Stress is a big player as well. The more chronically stressed we are, the more cortisol we make and the more cortisol we make, the more fat we store. There are medications we have to take for various reasons that unfortunately can increase that set point and make it harder for us to maintain a normal weight. And then there are the normal life changes that happen, aging, pregnancy, menopause. This all plays a role in that set point. It continues to increase that set point and make it so that it's much more hard for us to keep at a normal weight. So in summary, the causes of obesity are complex. Some of the causes are in your control, like your physical activity and your food environment, but some of them are not in our control, like our genetics. Obesity comes in all shapes and sizes. What one person struggles with is not necessarily the same as what the other person struggles with. And no two individuals are exactly alike. Therefore, it's important for our team at the MGH Weight Center our team of specialists to do an individual comprehensive assessment and offer you the best treatment possible. What do we do at the Weight Center? Our goals are to initially evaluate you and make treatment recommendations that are safe and effective and will improve your health and quality of life overall. You and your Weight Center medical provider will determine your treatment pathway. The weight loss treatments that we have available are based on nutritional and behavioral intervention. Nutrition and lifestyle changes to address diet, physical activity, stress, and unhealthful habits are important to change. They may require long-term follow-up to sustain. We have medications that help treat obesity. These medications make it much more likely that you'll be successful with weight loss when lifestyle changes aren't enough. You need to use these medications long-term. Surgery is our most effective tool for treating obesity today. For severe obesity, when lifestyle and medications don't produce enough weight loss, which typically is the case, then we have surgery that produces the best weight loss possible. Surgery is metabolic therapy and leads to significant improvement in the diseases caused by obesity. Let's run through this idea of set point. 
This shows us here that if we are living with an unhealthy lifestyle and we happen to be up at this higher set point, when we diet and we don't make lifestyle changes, when we just try to eat less and sustain that long term, we may lose weight as evidenced by that red line, but our set point, that colored bar, stays the same. It stays up there and our body is driven to eat more and to go back and even at a higher weight normally. So we rebound at a higher weight when we just try to diet alone and we don't change that set point. If we follow a healthier lifestyle and make lifestyle changes, sleep better, eat better, higher quality to our diet, less processed food, and we really make some healthy lifestyle changes, we're able to turn that dial back a little bit and change that set point a little bit. And as that set point moves and as our weight moves, they move together. And now our body isn't driven to go back in the same direction quite as much. If we add medication to that healthy lifestyle as well, you'll see that we can just move that dial even further and move that set point even further back such that we can reduce our BMI even further and keep our weight at that lower level. With surgery, again, that's our most powerful tool that we have to change that set point. And we can really dial back that thermostat and really make some significant changes as it relates to the amount of weight that people have to lose when they need surgery. Short-term effects produce only short-term results and long-term weight loss requires long-term results as well as it requires that set point to be changed. Lowering the set point is what really produces the sustained weight loss. Long-term weight maintenance equals health improvement and that's what we're trying to get to. Moderate weight loss is beneficial. A sustained weight loss of 5-7% to of current weight improves your health. It improves cholesterol, lowers blood pressure, lowers blood sugar, improves other medical conditions such as reflux or heartburn, sleep apnea, type 2 diabetes, and prediabetes, and decreases the need for medications. Treatment of obesity depends on the severity of the disease and the related conditions. As our health risks and our BMI increase, we need to increase the intensity of our treatment. And that's illustrated here by this treatment pyramid. If our BMI is in the 27 range or higher, which is in the overweight category, and we have another medical condition, or our BMI is greater than 30, then medications are indicated for the help with the treatment of obesity. If our BMI is greater than 40, or our BMI is greater than 35 with other medical conditions, then surgery is our most effective tool to get us to effective weight loss. We're now gonna review the MGH Weight Center treatment programs that we have available for you to be successful. At the MGH Weight Center, our psychology services are the cornerstone of behavioral treatment and really making long-lasting behavioral changes. Our psychologists will evaluate you in terms of your needs and what they can help you to be successful. This may include possible psychological contributors to your weight and factors that are relevant to sustained weight loss treatment. Things like boosting your motivation, behavioral problem solving when it comes to how do I handle Super Bowl Sunday, or body image, self-esteem issues, sleep hygiene, stress management, emotional binge eating, Family couples therapy, because to be successful with our weight, we have to do things together. With one person is doing one thing in the household and another person is doing another, that can be really challenging. Mental health services are available, as well as support group after surgery. We're going to take each of these treatment options in the pyramid one by one and start at the bottom with lifestyle modifications. Our lifestyle treatment programs are our Healthy Habits for Life program. This is a 12-week group class that focuses on nutrition and behavior change. We have an e-nutrition program. This is a 16-week accountability and education via email with our dietitian and help with a meal plan and making changes over the course of time. And then we always have individual appointments with the dietitian on one-on-one -on -one basis in order to work that way as well. Healthy Habits for Life is a program for healthy living. We start out by measuring metabolism with a device called a MedGem. This looks at how many calories you're expected to burn at rest. Along with your physical activity, the dietitian can help you understand what type of meal plan you need in order to be successful. This program goes for three months or 12 weeks. 
It starts with a dietitian visit to develop that meal plan. It then is 12 weekly groups with the dietitian and two individual sessions with a personal trainer to develop an individualized treatment plan that fits your lifestyle. At the end of the program, you'll meet with the dietitian and the physician again to assess your progress and to see where we need to go from there. During this whole time, you've met with the physician as well, and the physician can also add medication to your program as well to enhance your ability to be successful. The Healthy Habits for Life is a 12-week skills-based session in a small group setting, each an hour and a half run by the dietitian. One specific topic on lifestyle education is covered at each visit, and there's a manual of handout materials that you'll leave and go home with for use in the future. There's group discussion and support, and this is the most effective way to deliver lifestyle education. Our e-nutrition program is great for people that can't make it to clinic, because this is done mostly in a virtual setting. You initially come into clinic, meet with the physician as well as the dietitian, and have your metabolism measured as with our Healthy Habits program. This program continues on for 16 weeks. It starts with a dietitian visit to develop that meal plan, and then 16 electronic sessions with the dietitian in communication while you're tracking your intake and the dietitian can see and make suggestions to your meal plan throughout time. Again, at the end of the program, you meet with the dietitian and physician again, and medication can also be added during this time to support your changes. The e-nutrition program is lined up here and you will initially have a meal plan developed and track your food and activity levels. The dietitian can monitor that over the course of time. You come in and meet with them periodically face-to-face -face as needed and really solidify these changes. Treatment of obesity depends on the severity of obesity and the related medical conditions. And when lifestyle modification is not enough, we will move into our intensive medical intervention program. This is called our MINT program. The MGH Medically Intensive Nutrition Therapy Program is a 12-week group program, again, in person, where you will use meal replacements in order to be more successful. Having a meal replacement, a bar, a shake, a soup, instead of a meal, can be shown to be successful in helping patients control our environment and to add structure to our plan. Structure is very important, as well as accountability, in terms of being successful with weight loss. There's two sessions with an exercise consultant as well, and medication management can also be used to enhance the outcome. The MINT program starts with measuring metabolism again with the MedGem, and an intro session to our MINT program will take place. You will first meet with the dietitian and the medical doctor, as well as the psychologist, then join this intro session. And then there will be 12 weekly groups where you will use meal replacements, as well as tracking and using having a meal once a day in order to get more progress. Medication can also be added to any of these programs to get even better success. After this 12-week session, we then have our MINT transition program. This transitions you from the meal replacements to normal food. So during this 12-week program, you meet every other week now, which is a little bit of a decrease in the accountability, but that helps transition from using the meal replacements to a whole food, plant and protein-based lifestyle. Our next level in the pyramid is the addition of medications. And as I mentioned, you can add medications to any level actually, but for some people, they may not have the bandwidth to come in weekly or not have the bandwidth to do some of our programming, but can use medication along with something they may be doing at work or maybe doing something outside. How do medications work? Medications lower your set point, as we showed in the earlier slide. Medications target physiological mechanisms that may decrease your hunger, increase satisfaction with less food, reduce binging and cravings for certain foods, reduce preoccupation with food, and also increase our metabolism and our fat burning in certain medications. The weight loss may vary with every medication and it really is a trial and error process to figure out which one works best for you. In our medication program, this is designed for people with a body mass index of 30 or greater or greater than 27 with an obesity-related medical condition. 
if this is you, adding medication to your lifestyle factors is going to help greatly in terms of helping you to be successful. People are four to five times more successful with weight loss when they add medication to their routine. The lifestyle has to be optimized as well, and lifestyle changes have to be continued for medication to work best. Medications also have to be continued long-term for that weight loss to be maintained. Many medications are available to treat obesity. Here we have the FDA-approved medications for obesity in adults. And I suggest if you have a minute and can check with your insurance to see if you have coverage for these medications, it does help because unfortunately only about 30% of people have coverage and knowing which medications you have covered can help us decide which one might be best for you. We also use some medications, what we call off-label. This means the FDA does not approve them for the use in weight loss, but they're approved for other reasons and we can use them for weight loss accordingly. We have those medications at our disposal as well. Medication is chosen based on your medical history and your specific issues as you struggle with your weight. A three-month trial of the medication will help us to see if it's working or not, given how much weight you, you lose and the effects you're getting. A few medications may need to be tried to find the right one for you, so you have to bear with us and give us a chance to make it better. Medication combinations may be necessary, and if a medication is effective, it must be used long-term for you to continue to have that success. As I mentioned, insurance coverage varies, and so if you have a moment to check your formulary plan, that will help us to understand what can help you the best. And now Dr. Hutter will talk about surgical treatments for obesity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fitch. Matt Hutter back again. This time I'll be focusing on the surgical treatments for obesity. As we talked about before, the treatment depends on the severity of obesity and your related medical conditions lifestyle modifications, intensive medical interventions, medications themselves, and now we'll be focusing on some of the surgical treatments which include endoscopic, the gastric balloon, as well as surgery itself. The gastric balloon is placed endoscopically into the stomach and has been approved for use in patients with a BMI of 30 to 40 who have tried other attempts at weight loss like diet and exercise and that have not been successful. It's to be used in conjunction with a long-term supervised diet and behavior modification programs. Unfortunately, it's not currently covered by insurance, and the out-of-pocket cost is $10,877. The intragastric balloon is an outpatient procedure done in the endoscopy unit, so it's placed endoscopically, not really with surgery. The balloon must be removed after six months, and as you can see from the graph here, the people can lose a certain amount of weight over those six months, and they only gain about half of that over the, of the subsequent years. So with other long-term treatments, this is a potential treatment plan you could consider. Overall, the treatment depends on the severity of your obesity and the related medical conditions. As you can see, with that increasing levels of body mass index or higher medical conditions, it could warrant even more effective treatment. And surgery is a very safe and effective long-term treatment for patients with obesity. At the weight center, we provide two different options, the laparoscopic Roux-en-Y gastric bypass, as well as the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. And I'll be talking more about those procedures. But why have weight loss surgery? Well, First and foremost, it's truly the most effective long-term treatment for those patients with obesity. It provides sustained long-term weight loss. It can lead to an increase in life expectancy, with patients on average living seven years longer if they have surgery instead of if they did not have surgery. It can lead to a remission and dramatic improvement of health-related complications like type 2 diabetes and sleep apnea. and also leads to reduction in hormone-related cancer risks. So why have weight loss surgery? Well, one, the dramatic improvements in sustained long-term weight loss is very important. But what's most impactful is the impact on your quality of life. And people who have uh, undergone this transformation have really had an increased quality in life. Quotes like, I can play with my kids, I can go on a plane, I can shop in a store, I have so much more energy. Those are the things that are truly motivating. So what are the indications for weight loss surgery? Well, for one, a BMI greater than 35 plus major medical conditions like type 2 diabetes, sleep apnea, high blood pressure, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or a BMI greater than 40. Also, other weight loss approaches have not led to significant and sustainable weight loss. So let's talk about the different options. Well, first of all, the ruin y gastric bypass. In that operation, we staple across the top of the stomach till it's the size of an egg. The rest of the stomach stays in there, but it's no longer connected. 
And so a loop of bowel is used to connect up to that small egg-shaped pouch. So it causes an alteration in the food pathway, but nothing is actually removed. It causes decreased hunger and increased fullness. And people lose about 70% of their excess weight. That means if you're 100 pounds overweight, you expect to lose about 70 pounds one year after surgery. Again, all patients are different and the outcomes may vary. But there's also a lifelong need for vitamins and mineral supplements and you need to follow those levels over time. The other surgical option is the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. In the sleeve gastrectomy, we staple across the lateral aspect of the stomach and remove it. So what's left behind is a thin banana-shaped stomach left behind. About 80% of the stomach is removed. Unlike the Roux and Y gastric bypass where there's rearranging and no removing, in the sleeve we remove a part, but the anatomy left behind looks very similar. The sleeve is currently being performed much more frequently in the United States than the Roux and Y gastric bypass. The weight loss is a little bit lower than the gastric bypass, with about 55% of your excess weight loss at one year. That means if you're 100 pounds overweight, you'd expect to lose about 55 pounds. As all patients are different, the outcomes can vary, and the long-term outcomes show significant improvement in health. A little bit less than the bypass, but people do remarkably well. You still have a lifelong need for vitamins and mineral supplements. Overall, these operations are remarkably safe. This slide here shows the complications that can occur after sleeve gastrectomy. However, they're really not very common. Bleeding, reoperation, readmission, surgical site infection, need for reintervention, or the small risk of a leak. As you can see, the MGH results are excellent compared to the national averages, which are all shown here in green. And these are the results with regards to the Roux and Y gastric bypass. Again, similar types of complications, but the gastric bypass is a little bit more complex and the complication rate is a little bit higher. But the bottom line, both of these operations are extremely safe. In fact, safer than a laparoscopic cholecystectomy or other common operations that people undergo. The laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy is shown in the light blue line, and here it's shown to be overall quite effective as well, with an expected excess weight loss of 55% at one or two years. Also, these operations are quite effective with regards to the improvement in obesity-related diseases. On the left here, you see the gastric bypass. On the right, the sleeve gastrectomy. And as you can see, there's significant reduction in diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, sleep apnea, gastroesophageal reflux in these patients after surgery. So what might a patient expect postoperatively with regards to these operations? Well, the hospital stay for the bypass and the sleeve are the same, usually a one-night stay. Recommended time off of work is about three to four weeks. You'll be off of pain medications in three or four days, but people need that time to focus on advancing their diet and to have a healthy lifestyle. The postoperative program includes meeting with the dietitian and the surgeon, nutrition groups, psychology follow-up, as well as a lifestyle program that starts at three months after surgery and runs every other week for a total of four sessions. I would like to note that we do not offer the adjustable gastric band currently at the MGH Weight Center. Due to the high complication rates and the fact that there are better alternatives, we currently do not provide the band. With regards to choosing a surgical procedure, it's really an informed collaborative decision. The bariatric surgeon will make recommendations based upon the surgical evaluation, and you, the patient, also have a strong voice in deciding on what operation would be best for you. So to summarize the programs at the MGH Weight Center, we have the lifestyle programs, which include healthy habits for life, the individual visits with the dietitian or the psychologist, or our e-nutrition program that we discussed earlier. There's also the MINT program, the Medically Intensive Nutritional Therapy program, the medication program, and the surgical program that we just discussed. So what happens next? Well, with regards to the initial evaluation pathway, the first step is this right now, watching the orientation and acknowledging that you've done so. And then you'll set up an evaluation appointment. If you are interested in our medical pathway, the initial evaluation will be with our obesity medical physician. At this session, our obesity medical provider will perform an obesity evaluation, evaluate your labs, which are to be drawn at least one week before your visit, discuss with you treatment options, which could include behavioral treatment, weight loss medications, or even bariatric surgery. If you are considering surgery, the new evaluation process includes evaluation by a surgeon, dietitian, and a psychologist. Continue on the surgical pathway to get the education and support you need to optimize your outcomes. As you can see, the MGH Weight Center pathways are truly a multidisciplinary, team-based approach. Your Weight Center team 
will help you choose the right treatment to become healthier, happier, and to live longer. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present today. I encourage you to follow up at the Weight Center. New evaluations can call 617-726-0373 or the main line at 617-726-4400. And I look forward to seeing you at the MGH Weight Center.